in the part 1 of meiosis we did a brief introduction of what meiosis is and why is it needed in our body in this video we are going to start with the meiosis 1 and the prophase 1 of meiosis i am going to link that video in the description do check out the part 1 before starting this <laughs> the first stage is the leptotein stage in this stage as in the mitotic division the condensation of the chromosomes start and along with this the chromosomes here are attached to the inner membrane of the nucleus this forms a flower like structure in the inside of the membrane something like uh this and therefore this stage is also known as the bouquet stage these two chromosomes here are homologous chromosomes these chromosomes are the ones that have a similar size staining pattern position of the centromere and they govern the same trait the genes that are present in the homologous chromosomes can be different but they'll govern the same traits and therefore they are not identical but similar we inherit each of these chromosomes from our parents one from our mother and the second from our father these two come together as a zygote initially to form a human at the end these two chromatids that are present are sister chromatids they are the duplicates of each other but these two they are not the duplicates but they are homologous and therefore are known as non sister chromatids as we move on these non sister chromatids are going to come together and finally exchange their genetic material in the process of crossing over the next stage is the zygotene stage this is where the synapse between the two non sister chromatids start to occur synapse is this joining of the non sister chromatids on the homologous chromosomes it can either start from the middle portion and then move a little outwards to reach the ends or it can zip in from the edges and move inwards to reach this region this is known as the synapse so at the end of zygotene the homologous chromosomes are joined to their ends and this is the region where the crossing over will occur this structure where they are connected to each other is known as a tetrad or bivalent the formation of this tetrad or bivalent is possible because of a proteinaceous structure that is the synaptonemal complex it is a tripartite proteinaceous structure which means it has three major structures two are laterally placed parallel elements that are associated with these sister chromatids and one is the central element it also has some transverse elements pachytene is the stage where the synapse comes to an end and this stage can be very long it can last up to days so this is the stage where uh, the recombination actually occurs this recombination is possible because of recombinase enzyme and recombination is the genetic uh, interchange of the material present in these chromosomes it is the reciprocal exchange of some genetic material which is absolutely random there are some regions that are more likely to undergo crossing over those regions are known as hot spots while the regions where the frequency of crossing over is very less are known as cool spots the diplotean phase is the phase where the d synapse starts synapse was the process where they 
came together, came closer to each other. So desynapsis is the process where these homologous chromosomes will now start moving away from each other. The previous stage was the stage where the crossing over between them had occurred. Now these chromosomes, these bivalents are held together at their ends or the places where the crossing over at occurred. And these regions are known as chiasmata. So the bivalent are now joined only at the chiasmata and they are forming X-shaped structures. As they start moving away, the synaptonemal complex that was holding them together starts to dissolve. As these chromosomes now start moving away from each other, finally, we will get a bivalent that has four different types of chromatids. These are the regions where the crossing over has now occurred and the genetic material has been exchanged. Dikinesis is the last stage of prophase 1. This is where the chromosomes detach from the nuclear envelope. As you might remember in the leptotene phase where they formed a bouquet like structure. This marks the end of prophase 1. Now if, if you remember from our PMAT after prophase we will enter the metaphase. Metaphase 1 is the stage where all these homologous chromosomes and the sister chromatids will now arrange themselves on the metaphase plate. Now during the metaphase the kinetochores will attach to these bivalents and they will then attach to the microtubules that are present and they will arrange themselves on the metaphase plate in the middle of our spindle that is formed. As the metaphase transitions into the anaphase, these bivalents will now start moving away from each other. As these microtubules start guiding these bivalents away from each other, they will reach opposite poles with the help of their kinetochores that is attached to these microtubules. And as you might remember, these are the regions where the crossing over has occurred. As it happened in the mitotic division as well, after the anaphase comes the telophase. And this is the phase where these reach the poles, the entire mitotic spindle or here the meiotic spindle dissolves and the karyokinesis is complete. The nuclear membrane will now start to regenerate and now we have a situation where there are four different types of sister chromatids and each of this nucleus has one of the two homologous chromosomes. So if we call this sister chromatid as one, this has one dash, this has two and two dash. Now the chromosome number in the cell has divided to half. If initially the cell was diploid, now it is haploid. But one thing that you must notice here is that during the S phase, all our genetic material duplicates. So if a cell initially had a 2C content of genetic material, after the S phase, it will have 4C. With this genetic material, now meiosis 1 is going to occur. At the end of the meiosis 1, as we notice, 
we have separated the homologous chromosomes and each cell now has half the number of chromosomes as it did when we started however the genetic material has divided to half of what it was but it is still double we need to take this to see that is each cell should have one one dash two or two dash not a pair of them this is the reason why we need meiosis 2 meiosis 2 is exactly the same as mitosis so i link the video in the description you can go ahead and watch that video to understand how meiosis 2 occur here i'll provide you with a summary of what exactly happens as as the cell finishes with the telophase the karyokinesis has finished now comes the cytokinesis the cells will divide and form two new daughter cells now before meiosis 2 starts this genetic material will start to decondense as it did in mitosis and it had condensed in the interphase now before it is entirely decondensed mitosis 2 uh, sorry meiosis 2 begins the time period between the telophase 1 the cytokinesis and the starting of the meiosis 2 that is the prophase 2 is known as interkinesis and it is not very long it is very short lived so now we'll start with the meiosis 2 in the prophase of the meiosis 2 the nuclear envelope will start to disappear and the chromosomes will condense again and are joined by their sister chromatids as we reach the metaphase 2 the sister chromatids are now arranged in the middle of this spindle on the metaphase plate now one of the sister chromatids is the one that has not crossed over and the other one was the one that had crossed over in meiosis 1 during the anaphase these will now start moving away from each other and when we we'll reach the telophase the nuclear membrane will start to form again and now each of these nucleus will have a different form of these two sister chromatids one has the one and the other one has the one dash similarly meiosis will occur in the other cell at the end we'll have four nuclei that will have the four different chromosomes this one will end up with the two and this with the two dash now the genetic material is also half if initially we had two chromosomes in each cell now we only have one and the ploidy of the cell is also half these four will now combine with the gametes of the opposite gender and they will result in a lot of variations because this joining and the fertilization is extremely random the four uh, different types of sister chromatids that we have will express some different traits that will combine with the maternal or the paternal part that is uh, left here and it will express something entirely different depending on our mendelian genetics that we'll understand when we'll study genetics in detail after the telophase 2 the cytokinesis again occur again and we are end up with four different types of cells that have half the number of chromosomes as the parent did we started this video with a little bit of math to understand why this reduction is important so the significance of mitosis we started this video with a little math that made us understand why this reduction and division is important so obviously one significance of meiosis is going to be the conservation of specific number of chromosomes in a species across generations 
the chromosome number should not double up with each generation and therefore this reduction turns out to be very very important another thing that you must have noticed is the genetic variation it offers one uh, chromosome present in the body is going to exchange its genes with its non sister chromatid on its homologous chromosomes and this happens randomly no site is uh, fixed where this crossing over occurs all these gametes then form four different types of cells with every single one having a different set of genes and these will combine another different types of gametes that will again have very random combinations of these genes therefore this all this combination eventually lead to a genetic variation and this genetic variation across generations lead to evolution as the traits with every generation mix and match with each other and eventually the best of them are saved i hope you understood what meiosis is and in the future videos we are going to talk about cytokinesis the differences between the mitosis and meiosis in animals and plants where as their own stages and we are also going to discuss the checkpoints that occur in the cell cycle and how they are regulated If you like this video don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to my channel for the future updates thanks for watching